Hey, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks again for tuning in to another episode of the Altair University Logic Design Series, uh, specifically Lab 2, Part 5. So the last one was a busy one. It took a little bit longer than I anticipated, but as I mentioned in, in that video, we're going to implement a design that's much simpler and more effective uh, than uh, what we kind of had to struggle through a little bit in the previous lab. So let's take a look at what we got here, and the key, the heart of it is just going to implement this pseudocode. Uh, it's much more streamlined and it hinges upon the fact or upon, on, upon two facts and one is let's utilize the synthesis and implementation tools that Altera has built into um, Cordis Prime and two let's uh, let's let's use some higher level abstraction some behavioral modeling and allow those tools to kind of implement the gate level uh, or implement at the gate level uh, spare us some time because it's really you know think about the agile uh, development mindset we really want to demonstrate functionality first and you only want to go back and optimize uh, maybe down at the gate level if you really need to if you're missing timing constraints or whatnot but uh, for this design as I mentioned we're doing everything combinational here and that means that we're not worried about timing per se or clocks or anything like that so um, so let's take a look what we got here bring this guy up um, so again, as in the previous video, what we want to do is we're going to have two 4-bit inputs, uh, A, B. We're going to have a carry in as well on switch A. Uh, we want to display A on hex 5. We want to display B on hex 3. And then we're going to sum those values and display them on hex 1 and hex 0. We'll utilize the LEDs as well, but <coughs> um, again, the main thing we want to demonstrate is that addition. Um, so... I'm going to touch on one thing uh, that I haven't really touched on much and we kind of used it in the last lab and I think I do need to clarify what's happening here and it's these reg data types. So let me jump to that. Um, oh, here's another kind of clarification, clarification of our goal. I broke it down into the summation portion of the pseudocode, the comparison portion of the pseudocode, and the output to the hexes uh, that we're going to do. So. Uh, okay, so talking more about this reg data type. So uh, you've seen quite a bit in the past we've used wire, and these are both combined or um, under a larger category called nets. And nets uh, are, are really what we're going to utilize in between elements. And as you can see, we're going to use two regs here. And really, all the you know the main difference is that uh, a wire, although a wire and a reg can both connect between elements, a wire needs to be driven by something constantly whereas a reg can temporarily hold a value. And this will become more and more important as we move into lab 3, which is where we start talking about flip-flops and sequential logic, as opposed to what we've been doing now, which is all combinational. We don't need to worry about clocks and timing. Um, I really found that, you know, this is a great reference, um, or a great kind of like clarification of, of when to use reg, regs and when to use nets. Um, in this book, it's a, it's a great little uh, diagram, so something maybe to keep handy. Uh, if you're confused on when to use something, but I've also clarified or underlined some important parts here. So for a wire, you cannot use a wire element on the left side um, of an uh, a blocking or non-blocking assignment within an always block, which is what we're going to use in this lab. As 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 we we used in the previous lab, we're using these always and you know f potentially in the future initial blocks. Um, uh, which is very very important in in, in suing labs, so we want to kind of get get accustomed to to using them uh, in this lab. So, so then your your option is like, well, if I can't use a wire, then what's my other option? Well, that's right here. Reg reg is the only legal type that you can use on the left hand side of an always or an initial block on the non blocking or blocking and non blocking portions of the assignment. So that's why we have to use this reg type is because we're using um, we're using and always block. So we need to use a reg data type when we're uh, assigning values to it. Okay. Um, what's the other thing? Oh, reg, you can actually use that in assigns. And assigns is something that we've used a, quite a bit in the past. So you wanna, if you want to use an assign statement, you got to use a wire. Okay. Excellent. So I've talked a little bit about that data type. And actually, one really important thing that really confused me when I first started with this, don't think of reg as in a register from a computer organization or computer architecture uh, mindset. That will just confuse you even more. Reg is a data type, and it's a different type of connector. Okay. So this first portion, 
it's focused on the summation. So this is actually pretty straightforward. Um, I use an assign statement to um, our sum. Again, you see that we have to use wire because it's an assign statement. And we're just going to add our two inputs as well as our carry in. Boom, done. We're not going to talk about full adders. We're just going to make this assign statement. And we do need to point out the fact that sum is actually a 5 bit number, whereas A and B are 4 bit numbers like we wanted because we only have that many switches. And if you think about um, uh, kind of like some uh, I don't know, number theory, but anyways. 4 and 5 bit numbers, a 4 bit number can can represent anything from 0 to 15 whereas a 5 bit number can represent anything from 0 to 31 which is great because if we're adding two 4 bit numbers plus a carry in which is a 1 bit number that will exactly be 31 but if you remember we're only going to be representing the numbers from 0 to 19 so we don't really need to worry about the other digits um, and 19 is well within the capabilities of a 5 bit number so we feel pretty good there. This just gives us some extra leeway or kind of like confidence that uh, when we're adding everything together that it won't overflow and create some weird behavior. Excellent. Um, okay, yeah, and actually just kind of a cool reference, you know, I do try and like present all the powers of two information uh, wherever possible just to, you know, if you if you memorize your powers of two, awesome. If not, then there's a really good reference that you can have. It's called Vaughn's Powers of Two Reference. I know I have it next to my desk, both at home and at work. Um, you might find it interesting uh, as a reference. So, anyways, check it out there. So we have our summation portion down. Let's take a look. If I can click on it at our behavioral portion. <coughs> so this is really the the meat of uh, what's going to be happening. So what this pseudocode is saying is like, hey, based on what this input, if it's greater than nine, I want you to have this z zero value be ten. But if it's less or if it's less than nine, I want it to be zero. And then the real importance comes in when you're saying, hey, I want to subtract our sum value from that, uh, whatever this z naught is. And what's going to happen there is it's always going to output um, what we want on the least significant hex. It's either going to be a 0 through 9, which is exactly what we want. And we're going to control the more significant hex with this c1. So if it's greater than 9, we always want to, you know, if it's 10, 11, 12, right, we always want to have a 1 on that other other hex but if it's less than 9 we want that to be a 0 so that is what is this is saying and this is exactly what we have represented over here so again always block we're gonna do this think of an always block like a while loop in uh, many other programming languages that's probably the easiest way to think about it what's gonna happen is whenever the sum value changes it's gonna this always is, is, is constantly happening in the background. It's going to go through this next process uh, whenever sum changes. So, uh, so it's going to step down. So we're going to say, hey, you know, if our sum a, b plus our carry in is greater than 9, I want this, what I'm going to call compare, is what I'm just calling z, z, z naught. And it's just like a word. It's a little bit easier for me to understand. I want it to be a 5-bit digit uh, 1, 0, or 10, right? Um, this is the same as a 5-bit binary number of 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So it's just different representation, slightly easier, um, or you know, potentially confusing if you want to go with just always binary. And then for our carry out, that's going to be our C1. Um, I just think carry out is you know, what we've done in the past with full adders, so that's why I use the C CO for carry out. Um, if it's greater than 9, we want that to be uh, a 1-bit uh, that could be binary. I said digit one, but that that should be fine. Um, okay, so that's going to control our more significant hex as well, which is what you see down here. Um, and then if it's not greater than nine, we want that to be a zero, and then also our carry out to be a zero. So let's move to this orange portion. This is going to be where we're going to output to our our hex, and instead of s and a and a s not an s one, I said like hey h zero. So this is going to be our hex 0 value and this is our hex 1 value. Um, whatever our sum is, subtract that from our compare. So if, say our sum is nine, uh, 15, that's going to be greater than 9. So this is going to be a 10. So it's going to be 15 minus 10 is going to be 5. And this is also going to be a 1, so it's going to be a 1, 5. Boom. Exactly what we want, right? Um, if our sum was 15, that's what we want. And if it's less than 9, again, you can see, uh, you can quickly see that the sum is just going to be uh, that digit that we want to represent on that least significant hex. <coughs> okay. 
Almost done here, so it's going to be a quick one, I think. Um, so you might be asking yourself, which is kind of what I was asking myself when I first went through this, is like, okay, we have this abstraction, which is great, Keegan, but you know, what does that actually look like in hardware? So that's a great question to ask and something you should always ask yourself, especially when you're doing Verilog and hardware modeling. What really we're going to be using is just a bunch of muxes and then uh, ALUs or, or arithmetic arithmetic logic units, sorry, and then also some comparators. So as you can see, like our sum comes into this comparator, it's going to look at uh, that value, and it's going to output a one-bit number, which is going to be the select line on our, our muxes. And our muxes, you know, this is just going to be our compare mux. Um, excuse this error, that should probably just be a one-bit digit or one bit number <laughs> um, but anyways um, pretend that's <laughs> a one bit number uh, and then these are just our different scenarios if it's less <coughs> less than nine it's gonna select a zero if it's greater than nine it's gonna select ten right if it's less than nine it's gonna select a zero if it's greater than nine it's gonna select a one and then this carry out is gonna go right to our, our hex one which is our more significant hex which is what we want to do and then for our compare, this is going to feed into the ALU, which is going to do this uh, sum minus a compare <coughs> uh, right here. And that's, that value is what's going to go to our least significant hex or our hex zero. So what I have here is the same examples when we walk through those. We want to really evaluate all the scenarios that matter when it's less than 9, when it's greater than 9, but less than or equal to 15, and then when it's greater than 15, but less than or equal to 19. So there's those situations here. So, without further ado, let's start uploading this code. Okay, I'm going to copy that. First, let's create a project. Next, okay. Let's create our own folder for this so that everything is not just scattered to the wind. Excellent. Let's title it same thing accordingly. Oh, I missed that. Okay, there we go. Empty projects. We're not adding files at this time, although we could, but we're not going to. Let's add our device that we're going to be targeting. <coughs> the DE1 SOC. Again, that number you can be found on the chip if uh, you really have some sharp eyes, or if you want to look at your documentation, it should be there as well. No EDA tools, uh, or sorry, no any tools in, in general, so pretty basic project. Let's copy this again. Okay, so it's going to open up here, navigate to your files. We're going to create a new file, Control N, or you can click the button there, make sure it's a Verilog file. We're going to paste our code in there, we want to save it. Let's save it as this Lab 2 Part 5 same as the top level name as you see here make sure that's the case if you have additional uh, source files again that's not going to matter as much but for our top level we need to have that be named accordingly um, let's do our pin assignments pin assignments you can go here and do that assignment editor or you can go to this little button here <coughs> again I'll, I'll, I'll have a link to the uh, you know, if you want to get those these values, uh, I did that in Lab One Part One. I, I had a couple of different ways to do that, so check out that video. It should be uh, right on your screen now if you want to jump to it quickly. <coughs> all right, so we have all our hexes for our switches, our LEDs, and all our hexes. So we're not going to necessarily use all of them, but we have them all here. It's no real harm in doing that. Now we have that. Let us compile, and I'll fast forward right now. Okay, it looks like everything is um, completed successfully. Fantastic. So let's take a look at our messages here. Oh, sorry, I forget. You probably won't have your tickle console on here, which is annoying. I don't know why they don't normally have it there. So again, if you don't, just view utility windows tickle console. Okay, <clears throat> let's take a look at what we got here. So. A uh, couple warnings, no errors, so that sounds good to me. 
Sounds good. Nothing concerning. Um, let's step back since we have a little bit more time here. Let's take a look at our uh, under the uh, synthesis portion analysis and synthesis uh, uh, step of the process. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Uh, I know I did this in a, another video, but uh, let's look at the RTL viewer. <laughs> There's a cool little tool that will let you see exactly how everything is um, going to be laid out on the board. Well, not laid out, but it's going to how it's going to be implemented. Uh, we could take a look at layout, but uh, again, this is a good way of like seeing uh, kind of like what's what the uh, synthesis tool is doing to create what we've written in code. So we see some adders. We see that less than. Uh, we see that another add. So kind of cool. Here's our seg seven segments. If we drill into them. You can see all the gate level modeling that's happening, um, as well as to our uh, our hexes there. So kind of cool. Kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> okay, um, we'll we'll start to delve more into this. I know I haven't really touched it much, but we don't really need to for these past labs. But it'll be more and more important as we want to start looking at timing reports. We want to start looking at layouts and uh, optimization, place and route kind of decisions when when we might have some of those timing timing issues. So, <clears throat> okay. Anyways, so we're on program. We can go to tools. We can go to program here, or you can come to the button. Let's do that and no hardware. Uh, oh, yeah, turned on. Okay, so make sure it's turned on. So this is actually good since uh, uh, if you haven't seen this. So let's go let's see it turned on. Uh, I'm gonna select the one that we have on, on USB one. <coughs> okay, uh, let's detect it. Choose our device. Uh, you can load file, right click, lo add file, or you can come to add file here. It's going to be a under output files, our .sof or um, setup, what is this? I can't remember it, but something oh, output file. So we're going to load that. I'll think of it before this ends. Okay, so let's start it. Uh, start it, okay. Okay, and then again, take a look at the upper hand portion of your screen, and I'm going to be doing these tests that we have here. So I'll be doing these tests live, so let's take a look. Let's start with uh, 3 plus 1. We want to see that 4, right? So we're going to have 3 on our... This should be an A and a B. Just pretend those are. 3, on our um, three plus 1 is 4. Fantastic. Okay, three test complete. Plus let's move on to okay. this test so let's do an 8 and then let's do 7 and we get 15 fantastic okay last test now is to do 18 and then we're going to toggle that 1 so let's do 10 on this guy um, and then let's do 8 <coughs> and then we're going to toggle 1 boom Great, so everything looks like it's working, let's turn it off. And um, before I go, I just want to do one kind of like something cool, uh, something maybe different, but uh, in a previous video I looked at Adafruit, it was a great site. Take a look at SparkFun too, it's great. Uh, another similar offering has uh, not only uh, all the components you might need, but it has, also has some custom components, uh, some things that Adafruit doesn't, so pretty cool there. It has a great learning section as well, so... Just another cool uh, <coughs> um, uh, offering out there, so feel free to take a look and um, buy things if you want to. Um, fantastic. Thanks again for everybody for tuning in. That's all I had for this video. It was a pretty quick one, which is good. We want to make sure we progressively iterate. Uh, look for the Lab 3 section. Again, as I mentioned, it's going to be the sequential logic stuff. We're going to talk about flip-flops. We're going to talk about timing, clocks, all that stuff. So it's going to be great and tune in. Anyways, alright, everybody have a great afternoon, have a great Saturday, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.